through cultural revolution, so I went through a lot of like my, uh, you call it difficulty difficulties in my time. So I had um, arthritis in my knees. I had uh, suicidal depression. And I tried so many ways to heal myself, and uh, finally I came to Qigong in Qigong practice. At that time, I was a co college professor. I practiced Qigong for seven hours and a half on the soccer field. Then my pain in my knees, 80, 80 85% gone. And after another two months of practice, my arthritis in my knees completely went away. And later on, I found out my suicidal depression also was cured completely. And since then, I, am, I have been living in joy every day. So uh, after I had this beautiful experience and I really wanted to spend more time to study Qigong. So as a dean of the college, I have the power to move all my uh, teaching in the first part of my uh, semester. And then I took the rest of the time and went to go to the mountains and go to different masters and like a, Shaolin and Qingcheng San and Sichuan province and Taoist masters and uh, you just name it. And I follow different masters to study Qigong. I really wanted to find out why Qigong is so powerful. Then after over 20 plus years study, searching, study, study, and practicing, practicing, finally I found out the true power of Qigong in my level. So it is just so phenomenal, and I'd like to share this with the world. Why Qigong is so powerful? First of all, you need to know who were the people that created Qigong. It's not like Tai Chi is wonderful. I practice Tai Chi every day. But Tai Chi was created by fighters, by martial art people. The original thought of Tai Chi was helping to fight, helping to build up your muscles, and help, help yourself to survive. So if that is what martial art based on. Then later on, this is slow movements had the ability, had the effect helping the people to, I mean, helping the body to calm down, to relax, and of course, to rebuild the energy. So that's why, you know, gradually people pay more attention to the health benefits of Tai Chi. Yoga is very, very powerful too. I didn't know yoga that much, but based on what I know, some stretching, some post, is just so powerful. But the developers who created yoga at the very beginning was not for health. It's for spiritual growth, for enlightenment. You can stay strong longer time in meditation with a stronger built body so that you are able to get deeper and stay longer in your meditation and you get to that aha moment, connecting yourself to the divine and to transform your life. Then healing later on came after that. And Qigong, from the very beginning, was created by doctors, by Chinese medicine doctors, by the people who were sick. That's why you have so many different forms of Qigong. You know how many registered form of, forms of Qigong existing in the world right now? At least 10,000. 10,000. So many. Because each person from their region, from their, based on what they had as an illness in their body, they developed something useful and practical, helping them to ease the pain, 
One of the examples was like the Da Yi, the emperor of China in ancient time, 4,500 years ago about. He, as an emperor, he, want, he still wanted to he, uh, let, lead his people to do ceremonies. But he was sick, he had uh, injuries in the knees and arthritis and pains, and he was not able to do those uh, big dancing and ceremonies for, uh, for his people. Then he developed the Yi steps, nine steps forward, slowly, nine steps backward, turn around, saying thank you to the sun, to the moon, to the mountain, celebrating the uh, harvesting time, a lot of these activities. Later on, he found out these slow steps could help him to ease his pain. And then he had his people to practice more. And so that was the first written Qigong form existing in the history of Qigong. Then later on, a lot of Chinese medicine doctors like Ge Hong and uh, Li Shizhen, like um, uh, the Chinese medicine ph uh, physician Hua Tuo, they got involved with the whole process of the study of the body. So they discovered ah, the power of the body. The qi is so powerful. When we talk about qi, Lots of, lots of people in the Western mind think qi is energy. But actually, in the concept of qi, in the Chinese philosophy, qi is way, way beyond energy can describe. This qi is the power, the life force within. It carries the origin of the information of your life. When you activate this chi inside you, this chi has the intelligence to help you to fix any damaged systems, any damaged tissues, and any damaged cells. It has that power. This is the power of this chi. For instance, Esther Choiho. This was my first uh, miracle uh, healing uh, documented in Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. She was diagnosed with a rare lung disease. The lungs just filled up with the scar tissues. Mayo Clinic doctors wanted her to have lung transplant, but he did not, she did not want to. Because in her mind, Anyway, she was going to die. She did not want somebody else's lungs to breathe in her body. And uh, that was the first thought she had. You know, then she said, you know, anyway, I'm, I, I, was, I was not going to live for that long. She had been on oxygen for six and a half years, 24 hours a day. So she came to the class. She practiced the Qigong. I taught and I did Qigong healing on her too at the same time during the class. Eight weeks Qigong practice, one hour a day. She went back to the Mayo Clinic, all the lung scar tissues disappeared. She had completely new lungs. So this was up to many, many cases like this it happened in Mayo Clinic with my healing and Qigong learning. And the Mayo Clinic invited me to do studies. So I, uh, so far I did totally together and with the Mayo Clinic and uh, Fairview Hospital and in Chicago, another study on bipolar. And all these three medical studies were very successful. So you might say, why? The lung scar tissues could be transformed and this person could get a new lungs. I had many other similar cases like that. Why people with the big lumps in the neck through doing Qigong practice, almost like overnight, disappeared? How could this happen? Because 
they activated the qi, the intelligence in the body, helping the body to restore back to its original information of the life. Um, I believe you have, uh, get, uh, I mean, everybody has a cell phone, right? Do you have a cell phone? So when your cell phone is in a mess, what do you do with a cell phone? When your laptop was in a mess, you're, you simply just turn it off to have it restore, I mean, the, in silence for like a five seconds or so, right? And then you turn it on, everything back to normal. This is what we do in Qigong practice, in meditation. You give yourself the five seconds. Maybe you need five minutes or five hours to get into that quietness. This will connect you to the serenity. In the serenity, in the peacefulness, Chinese call it Kong, you got every bit of the information of your life restored. That's the moment the body is healed. Now here comes the question. How can we activate this life force, this intelligence then? Once you activate this life force, this intelligence, you can use in any way based on your life purpose, your goal for activating this qi. Tai Chi people, using it, using this qi to defend, it's very powerful. And Qigong masters use this qi to perform healing for longevity. At the very beginning, now let's go back to our talk at the very beginning. What is the purpose of Qigong then? The purpose of Qigong is to help you to activate the intelligence in the body, to heal, to live a long life. So this is the main, I mean, original purpose of Qigong. So now coming to act, the, how you can help you to activate this power within that. Now, a couple concepts we need to, first of all, understand. Number one is the uh, song, this, this word. Song in Western mind translated as a relaxation. Actually, song is not just relaxation. Song, it means you, you get into a stage of your mind with your body tension so that you are able to activate that vitality, that intelligence to serve you. When we talk about relaxation, you simply just sit down, relax, and your muscles drop, and you know, within a few minutes, you, know, you are in a night cloud, sleeping. Right? In Qigong practice, the song is quite different. You are still aware of what you are doing. You are coming to the moment, we call it being or not being. You're doing something without noticing it. You're touching something without, without, without touching. So that is the moment. In another words, you know, we have a, 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 another words to describe this moment is called the void. In Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu said, in the mystery of mysteries of, uh, in, the, in the mystery of a mystery, everything got created at that moment. What is that mystery then? The mystery moment is in between being and not being. Now how can we amplify this concept into our Qigong practice then? And in what ways you can help to gain back your energy quick and activate this energy quick so that you can help yourself to fix 
the damaged tissues, damaged cells, or refine your energy, your energy system, your qi system, in a higher level and quick. And Chinese masters, Chinese doc, and med medical doctors in the past have done a lot of studies. And through my over 30 years of studies on Qigong, I found out, I, I, I have already discovered so many different forms of Qigong and also the movements and postures and the ways how they cultivate this qi. And I found out only a couple dozens of movements are very critical and effective. If you use it properly and you make time to do it, you turn in, you can help yourself to cultivate that qi very, very fast. And now the key is, number one, you need to get to the moment we call it song. So we're going to talk about, we're going to experience that just in a few minutes. And then number two, the concept we need to know is like a peacefulness. When in Western, uh, in Western mind, you feel peace, and you, know, you, you just lay down, listen to the music, you know, feel how peaceful you feel. And in Qigong practice, when you set your, your feel the peacefulness, it means you are aware that how peaceful your body is, how each part of your body is so peaceful, including the internal organs. So that, that, that is the second concept. And also we're going to experience that in our practice. We're going to do a lot of a practice uh, uh, after I finish this little talk. And then next one is in what kind of things were involved with, um, with this process, with this practice, so that you can activate this chi. You can activate this intelligence generally speaking, through four ways. Number one, your breath. Number two, the posture and body movements. Number three, your mind. And number four, sound, the vibration of sound. So now let's just start with the breathing. I want you to remember this, Qigong practice. The purpose of Qigong practice to help is to help you to activate the intelligence of your body. That is what we call it Qi, to help you to heal, to live a longer life. A while ago, while I was doing, uh, in the middle of doing something, a student of mine called me. She said, her daughter and, and, and she were playing in a playground outside, and her daughter was having a, a, a panic attack. She tried the Qigong, Spring Forest Qigong healing techniques on her. It's nothing really worked, and her daughter was still feel miserable. And then she called me and asked me what to do. I said, well, of course, you know, call the point, uh, ask your doctor and, uh, for help, and now you can ask your, do your daughter to take long, gentle, deep breath while you were working on her, and she did. A few minutes later, she called me back. She said, wow, this is so cool. Just in a couple minutes, my, doctor, my daughter's anxiety completely went away, and and of course, she was very happy about that. Then she laughed and said, I remember everything you taught me, but I just don't remember this one thing, breath. And the, my answer to her is no, because breathing is so simple. Generally speaking, the most powerful thing usually is the simplest thing in the world. But in Qigong breathing, in Spring Forest Qigong breathing technique, we take it to another higher level by using this inborn gift to help us to activate this vitality, this intelligence in the body. What you do 
Now here's the technique. This technique has been kept secret in the Taoist practice, in a high level practice for a long, long time. What you do, you focus on your lower Dantian. The lower Dantian is uh, the energy center behind the navel. And there's some different, different thoughts. It's like below, three inches below the navel. And uh, here, I'm telling you, it's behind the navel, three, three inches. Because in my meditation, I see the power, the light, is not under the navel, but behind the navel. So I have my students to practice this energy point. It got fantastic result. So what you do now, you inhale, you visualize the universal light coming in through the pores of your skin, running through your skin through the gaps of all the cells, and then collects in your lower dantia. When you exhale, you visualize all the stale energy you don't need in your body anymore, changing into smoke, shooting out from the gaps of the cells through the skin to the ends of the universe. When you practice this, when you really focus on your skin, you will feel goosebumps all over your body. When you have goosebumps, it doesn't mean that the room is so cold, right? And so you, have, you feel cold. Actually, your skin sucking in that energy, balancing your entire body just within seconds. I'm talking about seconds. I'm not talking about hours. This is what I want people to do. Every day, we have only 24 hours a day, right? So uh, if I ask you to practice 24 hours a day Qigong, you know, then you will get balance. I think you know, not many people can do that. But here, within seconds, minutes, you're able to balance your energy so quickly, activating the vitality. So now I want you to practice this technique together with me. And so I want you to sit comfortably. And I want you to put your hands on your laps and your focus on your belly button, the navel, behind, three inches behind. Now, when you inhale, you focus on your skin. You inhale the universal light coming in through your back, your chest, your arms, your legs, your head, through all the pores, running through the skin, the gaps of the cells and get it together in your lower dantian behind the belly button. Then you exhale, visualizing, just say in your mind, this, the stale energy changing the smoke, shooting out from every part of your body to the ends of the universe. Now do it again. Inhale, the, the universal light coming in through your skin, running through your the gaps of the cells and collects in your lower dantian. When you exhale, visualize the stale energy changing into smoke, shooting out from every part of your body to the ends of the universe. When you inhale now again, you f when the energy coming in through your skin, you try to feel this goosebumps all all over your body, in your head, shoulders, arms, legs, torso. And when you exhale, goosebumps disappear. Your whole body completely open to the universe. All the energy you don't need in your body, changing the smoke, shooting to the ends of the universe. Now let's do it one more time. When you inhale, visualizing the universal light coming in through your skin, running through the gaps of your cells and collects in your navel three inches behind. 
When you exhale, visualize the stale energy changing to smoke, shooting out from your skin to the ends of the sky. And now you can open your eyes and I want you to rub your hands together and massage your face so that you can wake yourself up from deep meditation in this uh, couple minutes. Now when, you, when, we do, when we do Qigong, there's another concept, it's called De Qi. What's called De Qi means you activate the flow of Qi inside you. If this Qi stays inside you, has not been activated, you are not be able to get any benefit from what you do. Some people practice Qigong for 30 years, they still don't get anything. But some people practice Qigong for a couple hours, could be in a master level. How could that be? Because the person who practice two hours really activated the intelligence of the body. That's the key. Now, how do I know the qi got activated? You feel the tingly sensation in your hands, in your feet. You feel the warm feeling in your lips, in different parts of the body. When we do the breathing, breathing, this is one of the powerful techniques you can use to help yourself to activate the qi, uh, to heal. It's the signs you're looking for is when we breathe in, do you feel that kind of tingly sensation in your hands, in your skin? You, do you feel, do you see the goosebumps all over your body? So that is the first part. So you really observe how the energy coming in and you feel it, feel that moment. So now let's go over to the, uh, go, uh, go over what we just practiced with the, uh, the breathing. When you inhale, you visualize the universal light coming in through the skin and collects in your lower dantian. When you exhale, you invite the stale energy shooting out from every part of the body to the end of the sky. When you inhale, if when you start feeling goosebumps all over your body, that means you are, you are, that means you de qi, you are gaining the qi, or you are activating the qi. If you, when you exhale, if you feel that it's difficult to push the energy out from your skin, that means you focus on your skin too much. You need to focus on the ends of the sky. Once you focus at the end of the sky, the chi shoots out. So you, then your whole body communicates, I mean the energy communicates with the nature, with the universe. So that's the first part. The second part is about the, um, the um, movement and the body postures. Why? Qigong and Tai Chi yoga have so many postures and body movements. What do postures and body movements do in order to help to activate the Qi? Well, this body movement, this postures, in a unique way to help you to stimulate your intelligence in, in the body. You need to hold the postures and the body movements or repeat the same body movements for a longer time before you can activate that intelligence. A lot of time when we do the body movement, the postures, we focus on our hands a lot. 
The first thing is our hands. The second is our feet. And then the head, the spine. Why hands are so important in activating these vitalities in the inner body, this intelligence in the body? Well, in Chinese medicine, we know we have 12 major energy channels. Six is start or end in the hands, and six is start or six start or end in the feet. And the channels, I mean, so among these say, 12 energy channels, four channels are associated with the heart, with the fire in the five elements. It's associated with the fire. You know, fire, what does fire, fire do in the body? It is a transformer. It has the power to help you to transform. Transform what? Transform anything your body needs so that the harmony can come back and healing can take place. So in order to activate that chi, our hands are, are important. Now let's do a uh, demonstration. Everybody, I want you to stretch your arm out like this, like what I do, uh, both hands, like holding a ball, right? Okay. Your hands are slightly open, like uh, you're holding a ball. Not stretch open like that. Open just like a, a ball. Now, in Tai Chi, we do that. Qigong, we do that, right? So now you observe the feeling of your, your fingers. Do you feel the tingly sensation in your hands? If you feel that, that means you do qi. You activate the intelligence. Now, so I want you to close your hands like this and see what is the difference. You make, make your fingers together tight, like what I do. Do you still feel that tingly sensation that much? No, it's almost disappeared. Because all the energy channels, they, they arranged on the sides of the fingers. When you close your hands like this, you close that energy center, I mean point, communicating with outside. That's why you don't de qi. You don't activate the intelligence. Then now you open your hands again. Do you feel that again right away? All right? It is so strong. So now you can put your hands down. So the body postures and body movements can help you to activate in a deeper level the qi and direct the energy flow. Quite a while ago, when I, when I uh, had an international flight in the airplane, and when the uh, airplane went up to a certain altitude, and then we were allowed to move around. And when I was using bathroom, I heard there was an announcement that a doctor was needed to help a boy to stop nose bleeding. So when I came out from the bathroom, and I saw right next to the bathroom, the boy's seat was right there, and he was sitting over there holding a lot of uh, uh, paper, and a, a tissue paper, stinked with blood, you know, both hands holding like this, you know, the steel, the blood was dropping down from the nose. So I came up to, to him, well, so uh, uh, his, his mom was uh, stepping outside, I mean, step away in the bathroom, uh, helping him with more uh, tissue paper. So I asked him, I said, now, what happened to you? And he said, I don't know, as soon as the airplane took off, I've been bleeding. And I, I, I said, oh, n n no worry about that, you know, I, would, I will help you. And I said to him, well, you put both of your hands up above your head, and you hold it like this, okay? And he said, yes, okay. So after a few seconds, the bleeding stopped. And I said, you're fine now, so, and continue to hold it for one more minute, okay? And then I walk away. And his mom came 
and looked at, him, looked at him and said, hey, what are you doing, Tommy? Then he pointed back to you know, where I was walking uh, to my seat. And uh, he said, that Chinese man asked me to put my hands up to stop the nose bleeding. And the mom looked at him very quickly. And uh, the, she did see that bleeding stopped. And uh, she waved thank you to me. And I said, no problem. Why by holding your hands up above the head could help to stop nose bleeding? Not many people know it, but I believe you know it. But this is how the energy flow. The chi starts from the lower dantian over here and flows up to the chest and to the, to the arms. And then from the arms, it flows back to the head, and from the head down to the feet, and from the feet up to the lower dantian again. Once you put your hands up above your head, you create a pressure with the force. And this force, this pressure, pushing the chi back to its original channels. By doing so, healing takes place. You believe it, it works. You don't believe it, it still works. That's the, that's the beauty of your body, of our body. So, now, what kind of a postures and body movement will be effective helping the body to activate this qi intelligence? and direct this intelligence to a certain direction to heal. Several movements are very, very critical. So I'm going to have you to practice one or two, all right? So I'm going to have you to stand up, let's please. The first one is bouncing the body. Focus on your knees. Now everybody, please follow me. Drop your shoulders. And you let go with your stomach, let go with the shoulders, and keep your spine straight, but relaxedly straight. You still feel the tension in your spine. By bouncing your body like this, you help your body, the energetic system, the magnetic field in alignment with the magnetic field of the earth. You're activating the earth Qi, the earth energy within you and around you. Now inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth in this bouncing. And now have your hands up, both hands, and you let go with the wrist and bounce gently. You don't hold your wrist tight. You need to let go with the wrist because in the wrist, this area, there's a lot of energy points connecting to your height, to your reproductive organs, your lungs. By moving your hands like this, for instance, if you have a sinuses problems, you have a, a coughing and asthma, etc. By holding your hands up above your head, bouncing like this, it can help you to release that energy blockages in your lungs by activating the qi, the intelligence in your body. So that you can gain back your energy quick. If you bounce like this for 10 minutes, I guarantee you, your stresses go away. And you gain back the energy you lose two hours ago. Now you put your hands down. So now bend your knees a little. Drop your shoulders. But now you hold your hands like you're holding a ball, but put it down on the sides of your body and you move your elbows out a little bit. 
the elbows out like, like this. Continue to bend your knees a little. Drop your shoulders. Now I want you to close your eyes by holding this posture. And breathe gently and deeply. Do you feel that tingly sensation in your fingers? When you hold this posture, you say a password in your mind. I am in the universe. The universe is in my body. The universe and I combine together as one. Then you feel that your body and the universe merging together as one. Then you bring your attention way, way back to the beginning of the universe, how that energy looks like. By bringing your mind, your attention back to the origin of life, the beginning of the universe, you help yourself to activate more that intelligence. A lot of my clients, my students, just by holding this posture, their mind, their 10 years, 20 years migraine headache disappear. Shoulder pain disappears, spinal pain disappears. Once you open your fingers like that, you activate the qi flow in the six energy meridians in your hands. When you bend your knees a little, you help to activate the other six meridians, energy channels in the feet. And the feet, the meridians mainly help the body to gain energy. And at the same time, it also it helps to detoxify. Very good. Now slowly straight up your knees, drop your shoulders, let go with the elbows, take a deep breath. That's very good. Now you can take a, take a seat. So this is uh, the second one, the postures. You hold the postures, open your fingers a little. Bend your knees a little. Remember, when you hold your hand, you feel the tingly sensation. When you start feeling the tingly sensation in your hands, in your feet, or in any other part of the body, that means you activate that chi inside you. And you need to make it stronger. Through repeated movements, you're able to enhance this circulation and activate and stimulate this chi flow even deeper. Now we come to the third part, is the mind. Our mind is very powerful. We know our mind is very powerful. Everybody knows. Especially when we practice Tai Chi and Qigong and and uh, up to a lot of studies of uh, mind-body medicine, of course, the mind is very powerful. But can you show me at this moment, right now, how powerful our mind is? If you don't know, I have a game for you. This is called finger-growing game. What you do, I want you to put up your left hand, everybody, please. Then you turn your, your, your palm towards you, 
and you look at the bottom of the poem and you find the first line under your poem. Can you find it? The first line. The first. Is, yeah, the first line, the wrinkle, right? The big wrinkle. And then <laughs> you go to the right hand, you find the same line in the bottom of your poem. All right, now you stretch your hands open. This time you stretch it like this, right? Open. And then you put the two lines together, matching them together. Open just like what I do. And then slowly you close your hands. And you compare your hands and see which hand your fingers is longer or shorter. Generally speaking, fingers in one hand a little bit shorter than the other. Like my hand, my right hand is a little bit shorter than the other, all right? So if that happens to your hands, no matter it's the left one or right one, you put up your shorter fingers hand. Put up your shorter finger hand and put the other hand down on your lap. If they're the same length, you just put up either of your hand. That will do, all right? Now, I want you to close your eyes, focus on the hand you put up, and say in your mind, my fingers are growing longer, 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 longer. My fingers are growing longer, 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 longer. My fingers are really growing longer, 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 longer. I feel my fingers are growing longer, longer, longer. Now open your hands. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, no, open your eyes. Then compare your hands. Put the two lines together and compare your hands. Match the two lines together and come here. Did it grow? Yeah. All right. It's amazing, huh? Okay. So you might say, well, um, maybe I compare it in a different way. You know, you can have all your imagination. A doctor from uh, France called me. He, had, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor and three times operation, and there was a, a, nothing that me medical society could offer to him. And one day he picked up in the mailbox in like a, a my Qigong tape, and so he uh, wanted to throw it away, but the Qigong tape just came in, keep, kept coming back to, to his desk. And uh, then one day he said, well, I'm going to give it a try. So he plugged me in, he practiced the exercise. Six months later, the tumor disappeared. And he interviewed me uh, for the conference on the phone. And uh, he said, uh, Chen Yilin, I don't, and you don't know me, but I know you very well. So every day I've been with you two hours following the tape to practice. And about your finger growing game, and as you can tell your students, it says 75% work. He used that, this method to uh, teach in his classes. And uh, he had his students to practice, and he, he, made, <laughs> he, he collect the data. It says 75% work, and that was a pretty good. <laughs> and I said, well, thank you. When your mind focus on one direction, your mind directs the energy flow with a purpose in that direction. When you say, my, my fingers are growing longer, 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 that means you say to in your body, the chi, energy, please flow to this direction and fill it up. Then you feel the hand you put up, kind of a puffy, Think more tingly sensation. You have more chi, you have more liquid flow in that direction. That's why you can make your finger a little bit longer. If you continue to imagine like this, to practice like this, and suddenly you are going to grow your fingers and make it stabilized. Now, extend this concept to our healing. If you got an arthritis in the body, if you got a disc, in the spine or a damaged tissue in a certain part of the body. Hey, 
by visualizing, sending more love, blessing that part of the body, absolutely it can be healed, it can be fixed. It is just like that simple, but how we can activate that energy there? Now here is the visualization. Now, so I want you to close your eyes, my friends. So I want you to now do the breathing again. Inhale, visualizing universal light coming in through the skin and collecting your lower dantian. Exhale, you invite the stale energy changing into smoke shooting out from every part of the body to the ends of the universe, to the sky. Now you visualize light coming in through the skin and collects in your lower dantian. Then you visualize stale energy as smoke shooting out from your skin to the ends of the sky. Now you take it one step more advanced. You observe, you put yourself outside of your body, visualizing you are standing next to you, watching your dearest friend sitting in front of you doing this movement. Inhale universal light coming in through the skin, running through the gaps of the cells and collapsing in your lower dantian. When you exhale, you visualize and observe from outside of your body the stale energy changing into smoke shooting out from the skin to the ends of the universe, the sky. You continue to breathe in this way while you're listening to me. When you put yourself outside of your body to observe yourself, immediately you detach your spirit away from your physical body. When you do so, you detach yourself away from your own ego, from your worries, from your concerns. You allow your spirit to have a moment as a super advisor, giving you the guidance to the right direction with no emotions, but with wisdom. That is the trick. That is the secret. Now, one more time. You put yourself outside of your body. You give yourself, you give your spirit a moment to observe you as a supervisor, not based on egos, not based on emotions, but wisdom. You can quiet your mind, your body, your spirit down just so quickly. If you start feeling saliva changes into uh, much sw uh, sweeter, that means all the channels in your body got reconnected. That's the sign tells you your heaven energy, your earth energy, and the energy of you are all connected. So that's the moment the Chinese call Tian Di Yuan He Yi, means the universal energy, the heaven energy, the earth energy, and the human's energy merge together as one. So that's the moment healing takes place. If you do Tai Chi, when you have that moment, that moment, you, it is a powerful moment for you. When you practice more, then supernatural power is going to develop. Your third eye is going to open. Your sixth sense is going to develop. Now, the, the, last, the last one is the sound, the vibration. Now, I want you to take a deep breath. Now, you can open your eyes. So, the last one is the vibration. Vibration from the sound, chanting is very powerful too. 
today, today we, we might not have time to practice uh, uh, the vibration. Um, in my healing retreat, so one lady from Canada learned the healing sounds in my class. She went back to her place and uh, she saw a client. The client had a lymphoma cancer uh, in the neck. After her healing, and she taught her client a sound and practice for one week, two times a day, 15 minutes. One week, the tumor, the size of the tumor as a, as a, as a grape, disappeared. And as she came back the, next, the following year, she wanted to learn more about the vibration. Why? Chanting can help to heal, to open channels. Because each organ, the system, has like a vibration. And the vibration, of, or the vibration produced by the sound join together, merging together with the vibration of the organs. Once these two vibrations are in sync with each other, resonance is produced. Once resonance is produced, miracle happens. That is it. So, if you can put these four things together in one practice, in 10 minutes, you see how powerful it is? It will help you to regain your energy so quickly. We got sick because we lose energy. Once we don't have enough energy to operate in the systems, the, some, of the, some part of the systems have to shut down. That's the moment we got sick, we feel uncomfortable. When these things continue, then bigger disease would develop in the system. So if you every day spend like 10 minutes like this to practice these simple movements, you have no chance for energy blockages that created in your body. And your body is always everything in sync with each other. Healing takes place and prevention takes place. So, um, so at this moment, and I will take a look, just one more minute to, to give you one exercise. I want everybody, every day, to make time to do this one exercise. Um, this exercise is like, uh, very simple. I'm going to take this chair. Ah, so. OK. OK, thank you. Oh. What you do? Especially when we, uh, when we sit, uh, sit a lot uh, for healing, for healing your lungs. And right now, I, I teach this technique to uh, my, my clients and who have severe lung problems, um, tumors, uh, brain uh, something, you know, so, uh, uh, spinal problems. What you do, you sit way, way back to the ends of the chair and keep your spine straight. Then put your hands, both hands, you know, because I'm holding a mic, right? so can I, I'm not a able to do that. I, uh, maybe next, next level of development with Qigong, I will have another hand to come out to, do, to hold the mic for me. So at this moment, I, I don't have that level too uh, uh, yet. So put your hands on your laps, and you dolphin the upper part of your spine from the chest up. You do it like this. You stretch your chin, uh, lift up your chin up a little bit, and stretch down like you are scooping a golf ball against your neck, and hold it a little bit tight, not very tight, just a little tight. And then you stretch your neck straight up. And on purpose, you lean back a little, lean back a little. Hold this posture for me. You feel there's a little bit pulling sensation in the front, the muscles, the chest, a little, pull, little bit pulling sensation along your spine, the, uh, 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 the muscles in the, in the back. Can you feel that sensation? All right. And you hold it for like five seconds, and then you repeat. 
stretch your chin forward and scoop it down. Hold the golf ball against your neck and hold it up and stretch up. And then you still hold your chin down a little bit, like this. And you feel that pulling sensation, both in the back and the lungs, in the chest. And then now repeat. If you have uh, like uh, allergies, asthma, headaches, migraine headaches, shoulder problems, by doing this 10 minutes a day, uh, a couple times a day, within one week, your pain is going to go away. And uh, if we got those people who have uh, more severe problems than that, keep doing that. And recently, I have a uh, lot of success in also people who have uh, lung, lung cancers and by doing so, and uh, they are in the, in the process of healing. So this is a gift for you for the day. So thank you so very much for allowing me to share what I know about Qigong with you. Um, Thank right. you, Dr. Lin. That was, right. uh, given, so, I just know she as excess or deficiency in flow. Um, I don't quite get this idea of still chi. Uh huh. Okay. And I think still chi. This uh, this kind. Uh, this is a, a, a translation. A lot of time, uh, this instructors literally just translate from Chinese into uh -huh. English. And so the still chi it could be in their mind is you know, very possibly is the stale energy that's stuck in the body and for so long and it doesn't move, created uh, challenges in the body. So and that's what I understand. And uh, when, you, when you come to a level, your body very still and as you get into the void, that is not still chi. Actually, at that moment, in the quietness, the intelligence moves even faster. Okay. Well, thank you. You cleared yeah. that up for me. Okay, okay. questions? Yes? Yeah. Uh, can you comment on embryonic breathing or any more complex types of breathing techniques? Uh-huh. Okay. So any complex uh, breathing technique? Um, about the breathing, I always believe the most powerful thing is the simplest thing in the world. It's not more complicated, you're going to get more power. And so, for instance, like a chanting. At the very beginning of your chanting, and you might have a lot of different mantras to chant. So the highest level of masters at the end of their life, they only chant one sound. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So like you know, the Tai Chi masters, when, at the very beginning of your practice, when you see those like, people demonstrate Tai Chi, as you can know, it's very energetically, you know, those kind of movements, you say, wow, this guy is so powerful. The real master, <laughs> that is the real master he does, right? So uh, it is not more complicated, more powerful. It is, I guess, the, Simpler it is, the more powerful it is. And another question? Hang on. So, does Chico work for some people and does not work for other people? Um, does Qigong, uh, uh, some Qigong practitioners who work on other people? It, it, no, no. Ah, ah, okay, I got it. Um, yes, I would say so. It, it depends on um, your mindset, number one. Number two is in uh, uh, the way you move the chi, how you focus. So uh, if you focus on the movement itself, you're not going to get chi. If you focus on the feeling, so this is the secret. You feel the energy. 
you let go with the egos and worries. At the very beginning of your practice, for instance, in the, you had arthritis or headaches, you say, I, in this 20 minutes Qigong practice, I'm going to help myself with my headaches. After you, said, you say so, then you solely focus on those movements, feeling the tingly sensation in your hands, feeling the nice warmth, nice feeling in one part of the body. Make sure you do that. You only focus on one part of the body, not every part of the body. So okay. that's the moment. Anybody, one more question? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Some people talk about holding specific Tai Chi postures to affect certain meridians, uh -huh. certain energy patterns. Is that something that's been um, useful or just the simple standing is simple there? Uh -huh. So it depends on. Uh, what is your purpose? If you, you said, you know, uh, my purpose is to move my energy all of the body uh, around, make a general balance, those movements, to have a, uh, the, you know, your hands and your body move in different uh, direction and to uh, increase your flexibility of the body, and uh, that will help. And if you're talking about using Qigong, or the certain pastors to go deeper into the void, into the emptiness, then sim the simpler, the better. So it's different purposes. All right, so thank you so very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we have another speaker, but I'm going to 